In today's video, we're taking a look at how to replace a range hood fan motor assembly easy and simple. This is so easy, anyone could do. Everything that we use on the video, we're gonna leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That does help us out a lot, thank you. So you woke up today and started cooking. You turned on the range vent hood and you noticed something is off. Either the fan is not spinning or it's not up to its regular strength. Don't worry, here at the Statabox team, we've got your back. And the first thing that you're gonna need is a range hood, preferably in a kitchen, which is also yours. But if you wanna work on the neighbor's one, that's okay too. The second thing that we're gonna need is the fan motor replacement. And you can find the replacement using your brand and model number of your particular system. You can find this in the interwebs or in your barbecue paper. I mean, your owner's manual. Another way that you can find this information is once you remove it by the information or stickers or markings on the motor. You can also find this information inside the range hood, usually to one of the sides, the sticker with the brand and model number. Another way would be measuring length, width, and height of your particular fan and finding one with the same measurements. Now that we filled your brain with data, we can start. Remember always to contact your licensed professional when working with electricity. And the first thing that we wanna do when we start is turn off the breaker for that particular circuit. Because the last thing you want is to die on a clear sunny day or any kind of day. Let's go ahead and remove the filter. And we do that by locating the screw and tab that hold it in. It can either be a Phillips screw or a flat head screw. No matter which one it is, the technique will be the same. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. We always want to save the parts which we start because you never know when you might need them again. Like in the reassembly process. We go ahead and turn the tab and now we're able to remove the filter. As you can see, now we have eyesight on the corporate. Depending on your system, you may have a connector that connects from the inside of the fan housing. We can see that a little bit further on the video. Or like in this case, we have an electrical cover panel to the right. And if you notice on the sidewall, we also have a screw that holds it in place. We're gonna use the same ancient technique, passed down generation to generation of lefty loosey, righty tighty. And once we remove the screw, you're gonna notice two tabs that hold the cover. We're just basically gonna pull to the left and pull down. And now that you become a master of taking apart things, we wanna take our non-contact voltage detector and verify that there's no electricity on our working station because the only smell of meat that we want is in the stove. And now this is the perfect time to take a picture of everything just to make sure that you reconnect everything well. Now that we confirm that there's no electricity, we can proceed to the job at hand. In this case, we notice that the wires coming from the fan is not receiving power by a connector, but they are connected directly using electrical wire covers and some old trusty electrical tape. So basically what we're gonna do is disconnect the wires that are only used for the fan. So in total, we have three wires, a white wire, a brown wire, and a red wire. But if in your case, you have some tap connections, some adapters, or a plug, in your case, you would just unplug it or disconnect it and then reconnect or replug the new one. And the white wire is connected directly. On the white wire, we have three wires, one for the fan, one for the light, and the wire coming in from the wall. We wanna put the light wire to the side and leave that for the end. And because here at the Statterbox team, we like to show worst case scenario, we wanna show all three cases. In our case, what we're gonna do to make the connection with the new fan, we're just gonna cut and splice the remaining brown wire and red wire. Now that we have the wires disconnected or unplugged, depending on your situation, we're ready to remove the old fan. You're gonna notice two bolts, one to the left and one to the right. In this particular case, there were size nine socket and depending on how old your range hood is and the gunk grease or dirt accumulated with time is the power that you're gonna need 
So this is the time to remove that shirt, show your sexiness to the world and muscles, and use your technique of lefty loosey righty tighty. And remember, because everything's hanging, you wanna hold on to everything so it won't fall on your beautiful face. So if you had to cut the wires or disconnect them, you should be able to pull them and they would come off easily. If you have a connector tab or a plug that's connected from the inside, you can go ahead and disconnect it now. As you can see, the new one has a white cable, a black cable, and a red cable. So basically, we're gonna do white on white, red on red, and brown on black. This may differ depending on your country, county, city, state, province, location, regulations, laws, and ways of your particular place. If you notice on the inside, we have a plastic tab holder where we're gonna place our cables through. If you're not able to remove the cables because you have a tab like this one, you should be able to press the sides and pull to remove, giving you access to remove the plug or connector from the other side. So we're gonna use our best pretzel posture slide the cables through meanwhile we hold the fan at the same time now we're basically gonna reverse engineer our way to freedom we're gonna place our bolts remembering the technique of righty tighty lefty loosey always having a helper like a watson goes a long way if you have a tab connector or plug either on the inside or the outside you want to connect before placing the fan if you're doing wires like us first we're gonna start with the black and brown cable. We're going to place the two wires together and using an electrical cap cover, we're going to twist until it has a tight hold. And depending on your location, if you're going to place some electrical tape for extra security. In our case, we're going to place the electrical tape loosely because having lights, cameras, plus this beautiful body on a pretzel position, once we remove the lighting and camera, we will be able to place the tape a lot better. Next, we're going to go with the red and red cable. Cable. and we're gonna follow the same technique. And lastly, we get to the white cable. So basically, we're gonna take our two white cables, the one from the fan, the one from the light, and the one coming from the wall. We're gonna place them together, twist the cap on until secure and tight, and then place some electrical tape. And now comes the moment of truth. Before we place the electrical cover back, we're gonna turn on the breaker, making sure that we don't touch anything. That's not just a turning on and off button for the fan and light on the range hood. Because remember, you do wanna live another day. So we're basically gonna verify that everything is connected properly. And now that we see that everything's working correctly, even both speeds of the fan, we're ready to turn off the breaker again, and that's very important. And now we place the cover back. Now you can pat yourself on the back for a job well done. You become a second life giver to old junk again. Now that you changed the fan motor and you wanna check out our video on how to clean the range hood filter, we'll leave a link on the description for that video. Don't forget, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone on the Statabox team or someone on the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching, and here's a link to our latest video.